Hello everybody, Ian Robson here, and welcome to an edition of Westbridge Hills. Alright, we've got this going on today. If you recall from the previous episode, we had a ton of money from the missions. And I thought, heck, uh, you guys just saw the money, uh, you didn't see what it was actually like when you made or did a mission. So, what I have, actually, I have a couple missions right now that I can pick up. I think I've already picked them up. Uh, let's just check it out. Yeah, so I have wheat to the flour mill and barley to the train station. All right, so let's grab our man truck right here and let's get wheat. Okay, so what we need to do, all you need to do to make these or to be successful in these missions is basically just take the wheat or the barley straight to the place you want to go to. That's all you really need to do uh, for these to be successful. It's kind of strange. Uh, I think it's the first time that I actually had these types of missions in the game itself. And you do, like like I showed you guys last episode, you do make quite a, a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, I just wanted to show you how much money uh, you actually make from them. So if I, I've actually already accepted these missions, so maybe my bonus won't be as good. So wheat to the flour mill. Alright, so the flour mill is just northeast of us here. Grab our man truck. I can't wait for them to come out with a Peterbilt or like a Kenworth K100 that's actually decent. I know American Eagle Moddings has a K100 out, but if I compare it to this truck, this truck's a lot nicer, like texture-wise, it's got mirrors on it. I don't think the K100 from American Eagle Modding has um, mirrors at all. It would have been nice to see like a Jake break or something on this, but maybe that's an American thing, not a uh, European thing. Anyways, so we're taking wheat to the flour mill. So, I'll get the regular amount of money from having from selling the wheat there, but I'll additionally, because I'm doing a mission, I'll get a completion bonus, and I will also get a bonus for, I think it's called, like, call a time bonus. So let's just see how much we get. So here we go, wheat to the flour mill. So we have lots of wheat and lots of barley from the last harvest, so let's just see what happens here. There we go. Let it do its thing, and what will happen is once that's finished unloading, depending on how much we actually need to give to the flour mill, I didn't actually look. Oh, that's weird. That really shouldn't be like that. Hmm. Anyways, so depending on how much we actually need to give to the flour mill, will dictate. All right, so they obviously need more than 47,000, 47 tons. So, depending on how much the request is for, I didn't actually look for this. I probably should have. I imagine it was maybe 50 tons is the highest I've seen so far. Uh, but at the moment we have... Uh, oh, not that much more wheat. So let's, this should be interesting to see if we actually complete the mission or not. Because, all, like you said, like I said, all you need to do is just deliver the stuff. So we made a few... We made a little bit of money. So we made $25,000. Maybe not just from that, but from something else as well, I'm sure. So what we'll do is as we go down to go down past the job board we'll double check to see what how much they actually need and the cool thing about the mission board is I'll actually show you an update as to how much you have done out of the uh, percentage or gi it'll give you a percentage to complete it all right so let's just stop over here quickly and wheat to the flour mill so we've given 65 percent so they need 71 tons uh, we're actually going to be short so we won't actually make this one. And barley needs 38 tons. Let's do the barley. Yeah, because we're going to be short with wheat, actually, because we don't have quite enough wheat. Go figure. Uh, so what's going to happen with that wheat uh, one, because we don't have quite enough, so we have 57, and it is 63, I think it was. So that's an odd number. We don't have quite enough for that. So let's grab barley. And barley, we need to go to the west. And they only re only require like 35 tons, which is about 35,000 liters. So we'll just take a full load. It's not going to make a difference. Uh, at the moment, we have our T8. Uh, he's currently seeding wheat here, strangely enough. Uh, this field hasn't been fertilized quite yet, but it's getting there. There we go. Almost full. I do like this truck. I'm not. Uh, I, I would prefer a, an American-style truck personally, but overall, it's pretty slick. I guess this is. This could be a port from. Um, well, probably not from Giants, but it probably 
they worked with uh, Euro Truck Simulator. I was actually talking to a couple guys on TeamSpeak the other day, Farm Reviews, uh, Toby Moby, and I was saying, how awesome would it be to have trucks as detailed as they are in uh, Euro Truck Simulator, like a big Peterbilt 379 or a uh, Kenworth K100 or something like that in farm sim like how awesome would that be i haven't seen many trucks that really fit the bill as of yet which has been unfortunate but it's to be expected as well to a certain extent uh, it would be nice to see some really really detailed trucks but so far i have this one that comes with the base game is fairly detailed and every truck i've seen that's come out so far uh outside has been okay but the inside has been rubbish it's unfortunate i saw it was a it was a K800, I think a K Kenworth 800 or something like that. Um, it looked all right from the outside, but as soon as you went inside, it was just this truck upside down, basically. All right, here we go. So this will be the this will be the barley bonus. We'll get a bonus from this, and we'll just see how much it actually is once it's all said and done. I think it only needed like 37 liters, so 37 tons. So there you go. Mission completed. You got I got two hundred nine thousand for that. So I received forty eight hundred dollars for completing the mission, and then an extra two hundred thousand for completing for a time bonus. Like how ridiculous is that? So that's an example of how much money you can make from doing the missions. If you didn't think the game was broken from logging, well, the missions definitely uh, add. Whoops, that corner was a little bit too short, too close. Uh, definitely gives you an idea of how much you can make from the mission side of things but that just shows you uh, that I wasn't just giving myself money just thought I'd demonstrate that but you do get a crazy amount of money from this the other thing I like about this truck is how fast it is and how much it sticks to the ground it maneuvers really nicely so I hope that forthcoming trucks have an equal amount of awesomeness in terms of sticking to the ground handling um, Maybe even a good horn like that. I don't know. But hopefully it'll be a combination of all those things. That's what I'm hoping for, at least. All right, so let's go ahead and give the rest of this, or take the rest of this um, wheat over to the flour mill. There we go. And we want wheat. Okay, so what we can, what can we do with this? Uh, there was a couple things I wanted to do with this, uh, with this money that we had here. First of all, I would like to get where are they? A new header. So because we haven't planted corn yet, I figured let's do, let's get corn. So we'll get the Capello corn header, which is uh, for the ninety-two thirty. It's a twelve meter header. So we'll go ahead and buy that. Really? You can choose a color for it. Why, why would you choose any other color other than the color it's meant to be? Oh my goodness. It would just look strange if it was something else. All right, let's... Yes. Let's see what this... Oh, it folds up too. Wow, that thing's huge. Holy cow. Uh, it doesn't, I don't think it comes on uh, wheels like the other one does, which is a bit, a bit unfortunate. But So what does that mean? That means we also need a seeder that can seed corn. So we can get this guy right here, which I've never used before. And I think I'm going to get to start off with and then maybe we'll upgrade to this later on. I just like the Vader stats, and I like the way they look. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try one of those. And I think this is no-till, don't know. Um, we're gonna find out in a second here. Uh, reset the seat here, yes, good. And let's grab the T8 over here, and let's put that seater to work. Uh, I think it's no-till, it doesn't, didn't actually say, and if that's the case, we will have to buy a cultivator as well, which is fine. It's not like we don't have the money at this point. But I think it is... How many row cedar is that? Eight row cedar? All right, let's grab, whoa. This guy right here. And we can only plant corn or sugar beets with this guy, which is a bit unfortunate, but uh, we probably need it. Let's fill it with seed first. We actually don't need any seed. So this tractor I'm using on here is really, really, really overkill for this seeder. But anyways, uh, seeds, Ian, not fertilizer. Um, this tractor's got 435 horsepower, and technically the requirement for this particular seeder is only like, what was it, 60 horsepower? 90 horsepower, so we're about 300 horsepower over the necessary requirement, so just to give you an idea. The other nice thing about this is that 
it does allow us to it does allow us to get into some forging if we want to as well. I'm pretty sure I can unfold this cedar. Yeah. Uh, let's just see. I'm pretty sure it is no-till based on the way it looks there. But we're going to find out here in a second. I'm kind of excited to use this. I haven't used any of the Vader stuff, bef Vader stop stuff before because I never got the DLC uh, for 2013. But All right, let's check this out. Let's close the HUD up here. Ooh, wow, nice. That looks good. A little on the small side, but uh, it looks like it. If we take a look down here, it looks like... See those little wheels there? Like the... Um, they look like stars almost. I believe those are called trash wheels. And that little thing at the front here, I think it prepares the ground. I can't remember. I know the one. So those ones in the back, they close the little... A little place where it places the seed. Alright. Let's just see. Lower it down. Turn it on. Uh, might as well put the GPS on. Do a little bit myself here. And we don't want that. Let's just check to see what the width is here. It is 6 meters. Yes. Oh, it's not. It looks like it is, though. We need to lower it first. Lift? No, that is lowered. Huh. Really? It definitely looks like you don't need to do anything. Huh. That is I totally thought it it totally looks like it's a no-till cedar. Alright, well. That's really strange. Alright, well I guess we're gonna get us for a cultivator then. Jeez. That totally looks like it though, that's really odd. Anyways, uh, cultivator. So let's get something nice and large. Let's get the Vader Stat 1 too, we might as well. Uh, we could go with this, actually. We don't have quite enough. This one we could use too, the Lemkin Agrivision. Let's go with the Vader Stat because we're kind of on that kind of kick at the moment. And we don't really need a big cultivator uh, often either, so. Alright, here. Let's grab this. I always find this particular cultivator really, it's kind of strange because the way it works is it, uh, if you look at it right now, it's really long and very narrow, which is good. Because if you're, you know, depending where you are, it allows you to transport it relatively easily between areas. The problem you're going to have, of course, is in terms of length, not necessarily width with this particular one. All right, let's give this guy a go here. Let's start from the other side. So let's unfold it. Probably should slow down first. So the way it works is it unfolds and it goes on, where are those other tires? Oh, actually, doesn't does not have tires on the side? I thought it did. Hmm. Anyhow, so that's what looks like it unfolded, which is kind of strange. Uh, let's do this and this and new offset. There we go. So what we're going to do is set it up the GPS so it stops at the end of the windrow and then it'll turn it around manually. Actually, why well, I got to try something? I was talking to us, talked to, I think it was Dr. N, I think it was his name. And he was saying he uses the uh, GPS mod for everything. And one of the things he said that I don't know why I didn't think of before um, was to do a headland around the outside of the field first and then use the auto turn feature. And then basically you're going to save yourself uh, having a turn. The only problem with that is, of course, is if you change the direction or anything like that. Let's just see. Technically, I don't think you would do it this way, but let's just see how this works out. I like how like some of the tires, the tires spin sometimes and the other times. It's kind of funny. Look at that, that one tire right there spinning for whatever reason. I don't know what does it push down on to actually. What does it roll on when it's pushed down? I don't know. I've never seen one of these up close, so it's kind of difficult to decide to determine what's actually being pushed down. Because normally they'll have like tires that get pushed down, and that's what um, that's what will get will roll on the ground, obviously. Doesn't look like this is a has that. Hmm. 
Interesting. Alright, so. Almost done this little section here. Yeah, these things, I don't know. Vaderstadt has like ba basically just come to Canada. It um, Right now in Canada, it's partnered with Seedhawk, which is based out of Saskatchewan. And they are becoming a bigger contender in the markets. Uh, one of the things that I noticed that has been happening is uh, with the Vaderstadt Cedars specifically, they don't know how to set them up properly yet for our type, like, you know, in Ontario specifically. They don't know how to set it up properly yet um, to, be, to get the optimal yield out of it uh, for the cedar specifically. So it's really interesting. They're doing some doing some work with that. I know Peter Johnson, uh, Wheat Pete on Twitter. I know I've mentioned him once or twice before. I'm just going to do it like this. And I'm going to set it up so it automatically turns. Uh, there we go. Let's just see what happens here. Yeah, Peter Johnson, uh, Wheat Pete on Twitter, he was talking about that. He, he works for OMAFRA, which is the Ontario Ministry of Agricultural Farming, I think it's called. Anyways, and he was doing some testing with the Vaderstadt Cedar Rehab over there. Lower your cedar, Ian, for Pete's sake. Lower. There we go. Jeez. Anyways, he was doing some work with, uh, not necessarily Vaderstaff, but he was using one of those cedars to see what would be the best way to set it up in Ontario in order to get the best yield. Uh, one, of the, one of the real big benefits of it is the fact that you can seed extremely fast with those Vaderstaff cedars. Um, I know John Deere just came out with a 10 mile an hour cedar. Uh, Vaderstaff has, has been doing that for a while. So they, that's one of the things they pride themselves on. And one of the really interesting things about that is the fact that um, Vaderstadt, the company, will actually, what they do is they'll, they measure, oh, that does work a lot better. It still misses a bunch though, that's annoying. Uh, one of the things they do as a company is the fact that they actually count every single seed they put in the ground. Not as a company, but at the cedar itself will count every single seed that goes into the ground. So you know when your cedar actually skips a seed and doesn't place one down. And you can actually re readjust for or fix stuff along those lines. It is very impressive stuff. Uh, when I, I remember I was watching one of their promotional videos and I was looking through some of the information about Vaderstadt. I was extremely surprised that they went to that length uh, that they would actually measure individual seeds, like how many seeds you put into the ground uh, and whatnot. I was really, really pleased with that. And I don't know if it makes a difference because where they're from, but they are based out of Sweden, if memory serves. Uh, but from what I understand, their their implements, cedars and whatnot, are very high quality. I don't know if that's considered the same thing out out in Europe, in that area, but from what, I, from what I've seen, they are extremely high quality and very very good. Um. One of the other things about that is the fact that it does give other companies some competition. Uh, sometimes companies get a little uh, lackadaisy and don't try their hardest for certain things. However, having this extra extra bit of uh, competition for things like seeding and cultivating, like. This, they don't have much cult, many cultivators here as far as I know, but Cedars is where they're really making a big progress in Ontario and Canada. So, oh, that's really cool. Look at that. Nice. I'm still surprised that thing wasn't a no-till cedar, but... As you can see, so right now I have the GPS mod working on its automatic turn function. As you can see, it is missing some on its turns. And I don't, I don't think you can change it so it takes... I don't think you can adjust it so it does um, like a wider turn or anything like that. No. Anyways, but it does miss bits and pieces. And my, I'm just testing this out to see how it works, to be honest with you. I don't normally do it, uh, but I thought I'd give it a go. The best way, in my opinion, is still to set it up like this, so it goes close to the end and then it stops close to the end of the field. And then once you're when you're ready, you can turn it manually. So, for example, right here, because I've done a headland, I can just drive forward, lift it up, and then turn it wherever I want to go. That's my preferred usage of the GPS mod, at least. 
it uh, seems to be the most effective and most efficient because you don't miss nearly as much. You'll see how, because I had it automatically turning before, it missed a chunk. Well, I actually came into this particular pass and missed a chunk over the other side, so. But now I've made a mess of this, so the seating's going to be a little bit more interesting. And I can't really walk away from this now, unfortunately, because of the way I've done it. Say love I suppose. Yeah, but uh, Vaderstadt's a pretty interesting company, from what I understand. Uh, they they've been doing a lot of good stuff for Canada in terms of progress. Like one thing that uh, here, at least, we run into a lot is having a really wet um, planting season. So you really have to get your stuff in the ground when it's ready. When it's ready to go, it's like that everywhere, basically. Uh, but weather can turn really quickly here in Ontario, at least. Uh, you can have like a good a good bout of like good days and then it can switch very quickly into a, a set of bad days so it, if you can get your field if you get your field planted yeah in a really short time specifically with like one of these Vaderstadt seeders it can really make a big difference in what you get in the bin essentially like what you get out of the field at the end there we go missed the chunk there so Oops. There we go. Yeah, it can really make a big difference. And then on the other end, coming out of the field, that also makes a really big difference as well as when you can get it out of the ground as fast as possible. Like I know uh, my in-laws this year, what they end up doing, or the, the person they contract to harvest their soybeans and canola and whatnot, uh, they actually, the contractor, he actually rented an extra combine uh, which he wouldn't normally do. Like he has a what does he have? John Deere 90, uh, 96, 9670, I think it is, STS something like that, or ninety seven seventy. Uh, fairly large combine. He's got a thirty five foot header or thirty foot header on it, and oh, almost forgot to drop the. Uh, he's got a thirty five foot header on it, so it's not a small combine by any means. But he still wanted to get stuff out of the ground as fast as possible. In order to do that, he uh, rented another combine, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. I don't know how how expensive it was, but he had two combines, and they had they got it done really quickly because there was only a small window of opportunity, and it was the only way to do it. And it works both ways. Oh my goodness, I just realized. Check this out. If you look carefully, there's tools right there. Huh. That's crazy. Just in case anything goes wrong, I guess. So, yeah, I thought it was kind of interesting that if, the fact that they did that. I don't know if that's common. I suppose where you had a really wet season like we did this year, I guess it is common to a certain extent. But it's not something I, I not something they do all the time. I imagine. I'm just gonna get this little bit here. It's gonna bug me because I can see it. All right, let's grab this one too. There we go. Alright, let's turn this guy around. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, I don't know if that's common. It, maybe it is. Who knows? I can I assume during seasons like this that we've had this year, it would be relatively common, but it all comes down to whether you have the money, whether it's worth it, whether it's something that is feasible, all those things. Originally, I thought we were going to be planting this episode, but uh, mainly because I thought that was a no-till cedar. Uh, it sure looks like it. Uh, I didn't say it. I don't know if they all mention it. Uh, let's see. So th the very first one you start off with, it looks like it's a direct cedar because the power arrow is in the front there, but it's not. Uh, this one specifies that it is a direct cedar. These ones definitely are not. Uh, this one doesn't say... Uh, neither does this one actually. Does that mean you have to cultivate? And what about this one? This one doesn't say either. I wonder if those are. That would be interesting. It, I don't know why. I don't know why you'd have a huge cedar with, with having to cultivate. Because then I don't know. Kind of defeats the purpose for me at least. All right. What is it? I don't. I don't understand what's what's actually turning here. There's no, there's no obvious wheels. 
So I'm getting at. Anyways. Yeah, like I said, I thought we were going to be seeding this episode. We still will be, probably, but it'll be towards the tail end, which is coming up from what it looks like. As Dire Wolf would say, it's coming up to that wrapping up point. Uh, I, we, could we... I think there's only a few tractors I can actually handle this particular cultivator, and this is one of them, unfortunately. Now, yeah, we could buy another tractor. We do have enough money for it. Actually, what it'll do is I'll hire a worker. One of the cool things about the GPS mod is when you hire a worker... The, the actual uh, the actual lines disappear, which I thought was kind of cool. All right, let's take this a little bit of extra wheat we have. Take it to the flour mill. I'm pretty sure it's not enough, but it might just be. So 47, 50. Oh, it might. It'll be close. It'll be. We'll be just under. I'm guessing. I don't know how long you have in order to drop off the the wheat and whatnot. It just says, you, you just get a time bonus. In this case, I actually have to grow the wheat, so I guarantee you the time bonus is going to be minimal, I think. I am on I am on hard, by the way, too. That's the funny part. Like, if I had been on easy, I'm probably sure I would have got, like, three or maybe 400,000 or something like that. I don't know. That would be my guess, at least. Let's see if we get the bonus this time around. I'm not too worried about it. We have enough money for the time being, so. I do think this has got one of the cooler systems to unload. No, we didn't get it. I wonder how close we are now. Pretty close, I would imagine, but yeah. It's funny, if you go too fast, this definitely has a pretty big drift on the front end. You get uh, understeer, I guess it would be called. But it's weird, when you have weight behind it, it seems to be all right. It's too bad there's no IC in this truck. That would be really nice to see. Uh, like turning on the radio, something like that. Well, the radio and YouTube don't do well together. I haven't had that problem before, but I know many people have had problems with, uh, with, well, if you're on YouTube, there's stuff like called content ID claims, basically, and someone can say, that music is mine, essentially. That's why you have to be careful. I don't play any music, so I'm good. I'd be surprised if someone were to say, that voice is my voice, but it's my voice. All right, so wheat, we're at 90%, so we still need, so it's 71 tons, so we still need a little bit more. So that's the actual award. So these are all just front loader missions and I don't want to do those. I did try a couple of them and the time bonus is nothing. It's it's negligible. Um, just to see if it was only with these missions or if it was other missions as well. But um, the front loader missions, it's like you do, you make about 700 for the time bonus. Um, that's what it would be. It's not that much at all. Whereas the time bonus for the missions we were doing is a lot. Go figure. Nice. Almost finished here. It's missing bits and pieces. One last pass. The other tractor, I guess. I don't know. This is kind of concerning because it doesn't say whether it's direct seeding or not. It just says you can sow your field. So I guess that means you have to cultivate. So this is the only direct seeder they have. That seems a bit odd. Well, based on what they're saying, because this is the only one that says no previous cultivating or plowing necessary, and none of the other ones say that. So I can only assume that this is the only one that uh, is able to do it. A bit frustrating if you ask me. Especially if you want to have that no-till style. I only have one. Hmm. I might have to give that a go and just see. Maybe next episode. Alright, so we're going to plant this field in corn right here. We'll just harvest it regularly. Um, but what we can do is field number 19. We can buy that. Oops. I'm trying to exit out of the map there. We can buy that. And we we'll can plant that as corn and then put it in the BGA there. And because we do have the BGA extension, let's get that corner there. Uh, 
uh, because we do have the BGA extension, we can you put the silage in there. And I kind of want to try silage. I've seen what it looks like. I was playing with Jim from Predatory Gaming on his live stream the other day, and they were doing some uh, foraging on that channel, on that stream, a uh, live stream. Really cool. It looks the particle effect looks really nice. Also, I was watching David Oldfield, and he did it as well. So I got to see what it looks like from his uh, video as well. Well, the one thing he he's he's very similar to me in terms of the way he uses course play. Uh, he uses it quite extensively. And he ran into the same problem I did. Oh, I, I will run into at least at some point. What is it actually? Oh. I'm just curious what it's uh, what it's actually holding on to. Anyways, uh, one of the problems he ran into is the fact that um, if you want to run a forge harvester, you have to hire a worker and all that jazz. And neither of us are used to that, and you have to actually unload it yourself. <laughs> which is kind of funny. He actually has course play working um, on for him. He had to make some pretty heavy adjustments as far as I understand. But he did get it to work, so he has the opportunity to use course play, I suppose. But there we go. Let's go all the way to the back. Perfect. All right, let's grab the cedar this time. I'm still surprised. It looks like it really is no-till, but I guess it's not, so. Time for our overpower tractor for our little tiny cedar. I'm still annoyed I have to cultivate first. Alright. There we go. That's what we're looking for the first time. Silly cedar. Let's see what it looks like here. What we got? That's pretty good. They use the same sound. So like on this guy right here, that's, I believe that is the, on this particular cedar, let me just turn this off. On this particular cedar, the way this works, is I believe this is the the pump, the air pump. Uh, they do have some of them. This one's a PTO driven uh, air pump that pumps the air into, I think, bees. I think that's how this works, at least. Yeah. Uh, they do have some other ones that are electricity driven as well, I believe, but this one's a PTO driven air pump, I think. And then it pumps the air into that, to that big pipe there. And I think it goes into each of these individual uh, planters here. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, an eight row planter. And then it's done by air. And then I, there's some stuff inside too. I don't get too technical. I'm getting off topic. Anyways, what I'll do is I'll let this guy plant the rest of this field in corn. And then we'll come back next episode and we will harvest do our first corn harvest. All right, folks, my name is Ian Robson. This has been Farming Simulator 2015 coming at you from Westbridge Hills. Catch you guys later.